attendees are in listen-only mode. Thanks everyone for attending the webinar today. My name is Ben Lieberman. I'm with Think Big Analytics and I'm a business development manager here focusing primarily on sales and marketing. Uh, today we have a webinar on generating value from device data analytics. And our pre presenters today will be Eddie White, the Executive Vice President of Business Development at Pintaho, and Ron Bodkin, the founder and CEO here at Think Big. So to start off, we'll start, we'll start with Eddie White. Go ahead, Eddie. Good morning, everybody. Pleased to meet you all. I am Eddie White, EVP of Business Development here at Pintaho, and uh, part of my responsibilities include working with uh, Ron and the rest of the team over there at Think Big. So if you could roll up the next slide for me. Thank you. So Pentaho's mission, um, as it says here, we have a big data analytical platform. And essentially what we've got is the ability to provide you with a highly scalable, cost-effective platform to deliver big data analytics. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that in the context of device data analytics uh, over the course of this webinar. And we support everything from the discovery and preparation of your data, the integration of that, and then allowing you to visualize and analyze that and extract real value from that. And you'll hear Ron talk about combining that with the Think Big Analytics uh, consulting team and engineering services to give you very quickly uh, business value from the uh, significant amounts of device data that you are uh, driving and uh, generating in your organization. So we are pleased to be here and I'll hand over to Ron now who will uh, take the presentation on from here. Thanks, Eddie. Thanks, Eddie. Um, um, I'm uh, honored to be uh, able to talk to the audience today. Um, uh, my background as uh, CEO and founder of Think Big Analytics, um, I was really excited about the possibilities for big data when we started the company three years ago. Um, we started the company uh, because of two important things. One was I had been uh, vice president of engineering at a pioneer in big data called Quantcast that disrupted the online audience measurement market starting back in 2006, putting Hadoop in production and building NoSQL and predictive analytics technologies and subsequently built a fast growing business for real time lookalikes. And also I and the other founders were uh, leaders in a previous consulting company called Seabridge that brought uh, agile consulting for internet back in the 90s uh, to market and helped grew to about a thousand people in a public offering. So at Think Big, our mission is really helping customers create measurable value from their data using these, this disruptive new wave of big data technologies. So we work with customers to help them imagine, define strategy and roadmaps for how to leverage big data. We come with opinions about what you can really use to create value, illuminate training, and then hands-on implementation, both the engineering and integration and the data science to extract the value moving quickly in an agile test and learn approach. And that's our context of, of the discussion today. We've learned a lot. We've done a lot of work with a number of leading uh, device manufacturers, technology suppliers, energy uh, manufacturers, energy supply chain companies, industrial companies in our time. So we've got a lot of ideas and experience we want to share in terms of how we see the Internet of Things, smart connected devices really enabling uh, new capabilities in the enterprise that were never before possible. Now as a backdrop, what we see going on in the industry is that you have phases of adoption of big data technologies that many organizations, certainly for device data and more broadly, are starting with phase one, which is cost containment and scalability, putting up a Hadoop cluster, offloading some ETL out of proprietary technologies and off of expensive databases in that environment. But then that's not enough. The real value of big data is, comes as you move into the stages two and three, where stage two is changing the way you do analytics to get real agile insights, spending more time innovating around what you can learn from the data, blending data together in ways never before possible, integrating diverse data sets, technical data sets with business data sets, and driving for new levels of speed and accuracy to transform analytic functions. That's the next stage. And then the, the third stage we see is business innovation, which is really around changing the way the business responds to automate a lot more functions where you have a process of using predictive analytics to 
respond as events happen in real time and have data scientists tuning algorithms to keep optimizing, keep improving for better sales, better service, et cetera. We'll talk more about predictive analytics and collaboration as we go through the presentation, but it's important that we see big data as a journey and one that's happening across the economy and through many organizations that are using smart connected devices. So indeed, we see that this is becoming a world of smart connected products. Sometimes people talk about this as the internet of everything or the, the, the Internet of Things, where you've got increasing amounts of information being generated, whether it be from cell phones, telematics on connected vehicles, industrial manufacturing equipment, whether you've got uh, hardware and software devices being deployed into data centers and into homes, that all of these things are being connected up to the Internet, that they're generally they have sensors that are capturing data, and then they've got software, which has logs and configuration information, all of which is really important. This data really represents a, a gold mine for any company that, that is in the supply chain that's connected to those products, the suppliers, the customers, the uh, intermediaries, and the key thing is to get strategic value out of those products, to start to store and analyze the data, to get to the fine-grained detailed data and start to drive off of what's really happening as products are being used rather than high-level summaries, which has been the traditional relational database paradigm. So we see these capabilities using product data, connected products, as important for a range of functions in our customers. Business general managers, those who are owning the line of business, understanding what's working and not in our product line the product leaders who are defining future versions of the product, figuring out how to do the engineering, where to put priorities, what's working well, what's not, where to do QA work, how to coordinate with supply chain partners that are providing components, the service leadership in the organization. Often the service organization is the hub of information about how products are really being deployed. As we move to a world where more and more products are being sold with an ongoing subscription component rather than an upfront fee, the service department becomes increasingly important in maintaining the happiness and success of use of customers, and having real data about what's working and not in the field is, is instrumental. Naturally, sales is, has an important seat at the table. It's important to know what customers are using. It's important to know where customers might be interested in new products or features and what customers are at risk of defecting and stopping being a customer. Marketing, likewise, wants to understand what kind of value propositions, what's important um, that uh, customers would like to know to tune messages and to integrate real-world integration and actions with marketing messages. And indeed, manufacturing can drive efficiency and, and value. And so fundamentally, what we see is you, all of these different groups in the business have the ability to start to have much better visibility about what's going on their installed products and their customer base, what's really working and not, so that they can take a strategic view, align business metrics with detailed technical metrics, and build smart plans to gain competitive advantage. So we see this playing out across a number of industries and becoming increasingly important to be a leader and to gain share and to build great margins in the business. So we think that uh, using this smart connected data is very important. Let's talk a little bit more about the details. So with that, let's, let's pause and do our, our first polling question. Ben, if you want to take us through that. Yeah, absolutely. So what would you most like to do with your product data that you aren't doing now? Improve services, better product management, drive better sales and renewals, or use for new data analytics offerings? While people are answering that, just to we'll talk a little bit more about these. But improving service can mean things like driving to better uh, response to customers, higher customer satisfaction, lower cost of servicing, better product management, meaning using real data about how products are being used to inform product planning decisions, areas of investment, better sales and renewals, using direct data about customer use to help you make the right investments and to provide leads and information to the sales team. And then better new data analytics offerings is one that we see a lot of times organizations that have traditionally supplied 
a product to their customers are now in a position to start to provide data and analytics, benchmarking services, comparative data, best practices. And indeed, of, of the four, we can see that uh, it's a landslide for new data analytics offerings that people are very excited about being able to provide analytics on the products that they have and start to create new revenue streams. So that's, that's interesting. That's not what I was expecting, but very interesting to see. So moving on to our uh, next discussion, um, we, um, let's unpack some of these different areas where device analytics can really have an impact on the business. What we see here is we'll start with new offerings. Um, the data anal and analytics products, we've seen companies across a range of industries that become, they're very interested in how they can expand their value proposition for customers and take data that's now available from the pro connected products they have and pr add value to their customers. So it's increasingly becoming important that data is being woven into the fabric of the overall supplier relationship with customers. What data is available? What can I do to understand how to operate better as a customer? Can I guide my customers on how to best operate, how to be more efficient and provide more value. Um, analytics on top of that, being able to visualize and get quick insights to make decisions to, on how to operate and how to execute better is a natural extension of that. And another point that's important around those data and analytics products is so often we see big data changing a mindset where companies can say, how do I start to bring in new data sets that I can blend with the data I already have that will add value to my customers? Can I take in geographic data? Can I take in industry data? Can I take in um, third party feeds of information about industries or trends, economics, and provide richer data and analytics that are relevant to all my customers? So in the area of new offerings, that's one where you see across a number of industries, a lot of interest. Now in terms of driving improved service, um, there's a number of opportunities. Better customer satisfaction through things like proactively identifying issues and resolving them before there's a problem for a customer. Identifying customers who are at risk of churning, who are unhappy and, and reaching out to them and resolving problems before they become an issue. Uh, reducing support costs. So driving to better self-service, better helping customers solve their own problems, which can also help customer service satisfaction. Um, in terms of product management, um, there's a big difference that so many of these products that have been seen out in the market are, have not had any direct feedback about what's really happening. Suddenly when you start to see what's being used and you have the insight as to how to better address what customers care about and what's mattering to them, it makes a big difference. So the anal analogy here is how websites change the way businesses interact with customers versus other channels where there wasn't the same direct measurable feedback. Providing the same kind of analytics that websites have had for the last 15 years in connected products is a big shift in how products work. And then finally, increased sales. So being able to cross-sell, offering new things that matter to customers, upsell them, drive renewals, and, and indeed enforce license compliance are all areas where the value can be created. And needless to say, we see these applying across a range of industries, from technology products to manufacturers of industrial goods, smart grid and other energy areas, and telecommunications. When we look at it, we see that there's a range of data sets that matter. So blending data, often we see complex structured data that was never before accessible and useful for analytics is just as important as more traditional structured data. So things like logs from software and the configuration of software, unstructured data, text and video, online activity, time series from sensors, measuring locations or temperatures or electricity usage, those get blended in as technical data with traditional structured data, transactions of a customer, account relationships, sales history, uh, product bill of materials, uh, industrial systems, manufacturing and supply chain systems. So as what we often see is the real opportunity around big data is blending together structured and unstructured data to create, provide a much deeper understanding of what's going on than either data set could provide on its own. From a technical standpoint, 
Again, there's a range of capabilities. Now, companies that are starting using device analytics don't need to implement everything on this list in order to get value. This is a long, long menu, and most of our customers are starting with one or two of the items here and expanding from there. Scalable infrastructure is a common initial foundation that then allows for a range of values, whether it be ad hoc analysis for resolving issues by advanced engineers, for allowing product planning to investigate specific topics, set priorities, whether it be real-time response, seeing what's going on in the field, seeing what's going on for customers, making it easy to do search in a faceted way to find information as issues come up and get a bigger context around a product or an installation or a customer, being able to get to quick answers that are approximate without having to wait long periods of time for traditional projects to do analysis. All of these are high value that we see in this blended big data architectures supporting. We also see there's a lot of opportunity around predictive models. Being able to, to gather all this data allows you to start to predict failures of parts and proactively service uh, items that are at risk of failing before they fail, classifying incidents and identifying experts inside the organization to respond to them, improving by analyzing failures retrospectively, identifying limits or system control or configuration issues before they cause problems and prioritizing those issues. Um, likewise, uh, we see that having just the ability to capture history and blended data sets empowers all of these use cases from ad hoc to predictive to real time. Now looking here at this screen, we can see that an example of a dashboard, just to give a flavor for how this kind of information can come together in a web interface or a visualization for a user, you can see that different people can have different views, that you can blend the ability to do complex search on data in real time. You can have proactive alerts of issues that are coming up across an install base, a customer base, uh, an organization. You can combine data streams about data centers, about different components, different parts. You can have real-time status that highlights issues that matter to this specific user depending on their role in the organization. And you can have proactive analytics around potential failures. There are many possible interfaces that can be built, but the purpose of this is showing that integrated big data capabilities with rich visualization can be important in real time and it can be powered by advanced models that are under the hood. With that, let's take our second full polling question, Ben. Thanks, Ron. Second polling question, which line of business is the primary user of analytics for connected products? Engineering, product management, customer service or call center, operations, analytics slash business intelligence. Okay, it looks like so 19% engineering, 14% product management, 10% customer service or call center, 10% operations, and 48% analytics slash business intelligence. So pretty heavily weighted there. All right. Thanks, Ben. Now with that, what, I, what we'd like to do is shift into a couple of case studies. Um, just, just before we dive into the case studies, it might be useful to, to pause if there's any questions that are on the table. I can't see if there's questions. Um, ben, do we have any questions that are in the queue before we dive into a couple of case studies? Uh, most of the questions are around, just a couple in there around, if most of these solutions are created on, in open source technology. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about some of the technologies, but in general, we see that there's uh, 
Big data is being powered by a wave of open source innovation, whether it be platforms like Hadoop, Cassandra, HBase, uh, R Hadoop, or visualization tools like Pentaho's that are, have open source foundations. But there's typically a blend where you see uh, commercial software, commercial support laid on top of the open source with significant value add like management, support indemnification. So we typically see the, these technologies coming together where big data isn't a replacement for traditional technologies, nor is there a single stack or product that has everything in the box. Instead, it's elegant integration of great technologies. Open source is a typical foundation, but then there's value-added commercial software and assembly integration with established assets. Okay, and then so with that, with that question, yes, um, before we, oh, sorry, go ahead. Is there another one? On, um, are there are there any solution accelerators available along the along those lines? Absolutely, it's a great question. So at Think Big Analytics, our business model is to help customers deliver uh, great solutions, great analytic applications, and we constantly integrate best of breed components into those solutions, and indeed we do invest in accelerators. So we have built a number of components and capabilities to help move customers move quickly when they want to build device analytic solutions, integration of best in class uh, visualization and transformation tools like Pentaho's, integration of data processing platforms, Hadoop, NoSQL, real-time ingestion technologies, as well as you know, more domain-specific problems of how do you organize data for fast, faceted search, how do you drill down into a blended real-time view, how do you start to build predictive models for failure and capacity. So absolutely, you know, we, we have been investing in uh, models, accelerators that allow us to move more quickly and this has been based on our experience in working with a number of large companies that in real pioneering work, often with Pentaho, um, in doing, in, in building these kinds of device analytic solutions. Indeed, with that in mind, what I'd like to do is talk about a couple of case studies that are generalizations of work we've done with more than one customer in, in, in a couple of different categories. The first one is around storage systems. So um, it, for storage systems providers, organizations that are selling devices into information technology, you typically see goals of wanting to allow uh, data, data storage of the information that's available from those storage devices. So as they phone home, as they send data back to say, here's what's going on, being able to just capture petabytes of data around installations around the globe is important. Being able to scale and smoothly take in the data, being able to, to allow advanced query on these massive data sets, allowing this, the resources to store and process the data across the organization and indeed for self-service for end customers in a way that's cost effective. You know, we've seen as organizations that have used more traditional database technologies have had severe limitations in their ability to store and access the data at much higher cost. These then lead to a desire to, to go from visualization of, of data to insights from predictive analytics around failures to improve customer satisfaction to drive product planning. So at Think Big, we've been able to help customers build roadmaps to prioritize among the different functionalities to identify the right skills and technology in an architecture to rapidly validate the needs and to incrementally roll out functionality, bringing in new data sets integrating new capabilities over time for the business. So, you know, the, the, important, the importance is having a clear plan and being able to use an agile test and learn approach of getting incremental results out quickly, getting data sets into the system, starting to get feedback from end customers that can leverage these accelerators. So an incremental approach where you get value quickly and move uh, to continue to enhance your capabilities. What we've, we've seen in these cases is a lot of times the challenges for storage providers are having legacy data storage where they can't store a lot of data, 
you know, challenges in scaling and difficulty integrating more complex data sets that aren't in traditional relational format. And what we've seen is outcomes from organizations that have followed this path is saving the millions of dollars in, in overall system cost, reducing help desk tickets by a factor of a third, um, developing better and better rules and predictive analytics around failures to, and ability to investigate and resolve more, those more quickly, and starting to generate meaningful impact for product planning and sales across the organization. And moving on, a uh, similar uh, notion of a, another class of enterprise that has rich machine-generated data are network data providers, organizations that have typically uh, many terabytes, even petabytes of data of, that are flowing across uh, networks, where being able to process terabytes of that data quickly, being able to support uh, better security research and response to security threats, identifying malicious actors and protecting the brands of customers by both sharing, uh, sharing known problems and responding quickly to threats are, are important. So there's lots of value around security as well as better understanding traffic and product planning. So here again, ThinkBig has worked with companies of this type to build roadmaps for architecture improvements in business priorities, drive the skills and technology gaps to be able to build plans for incrementally adding new capabilities and rolling out value-added functionality, do data science work to drive pro proactive models and what we call a jump start, a fast process to analyze and create value around data, and facilitate the business to leverage these new capabilities. So when you look here, we see that the, some of the challenges network data providers have faced are dealing with malicious activity over the network, having limits in the amount of data they can retain and the ability to process the data, having bad actors hidden um, in large volumes of data that were hard to track. And we've seen working with companies in this space, significant reductions in false positives, proactive identification of security problems in advance of uh, real behavior or, or of activity of these malicious actors, um, you know, reducing the lead time to identify the behavior and ultimately providing bigger insights. And I see there is a question, and the question is, are these uh, real business cases of customers of ThinkBig Analytics? And the answer is yes. What we're doing here is we're talking about the, both of these categories. We've got more than one customer, and we're talking about some of what we've found and done across more than one company um, in an industry identifying some of the common trends and themes that we've seen across a class of companies. So with that, I think we've got uh, one other question, um, which is, does this only apply to hardware manufacturers, or can this type of solution apply to other areas? And indeed, we see that smart connected products go beyond simply hardware. You know, that there's, there's value for any, any product that has hardware or software uh, components and sensors, whether it be smart grids, whether it be software as a service providers, whether it be industrial manufacturers. And indeed, um, as we'll get to on this next slide, our, in our reference architecture, many of the same components and capabilities that come into um, a big data architecture are very relevant for even other industries and, and areas of application, that big data first grew up around a number of web activities, you know, web search, display advertising, but many of these same capabilities are extremely valuable for device analytics and the Internet of Things. Now, I don't want to read through this whole slide in detail on our reference architecture at ThinkBig. The important point of this slide is really to, to note that there are different capabilities and components that come together to build big data solutions, that it takes uh, great tools, it takes great platforms. We see Hadoop as a, a foundational element for batch analytics, but it complements more real-time technologies such as NoSQL databases, search indexing, and MPP databases for structured analysis. So we see that integrating these together with the kind of accelerators we talked before is essential for unlocking value 
in the device analytics space and indeed in any space where one is building big data applications. It's also important to note that you don't need to do all of the bubbles on this chart to get started, that this, is, this represents a fairly mature, sophisticated big data architecture where a large number of capabilities have been put together to solve a range of use cases. With a test and learn approach, typically customers of ours will start with a few of these and get value and then incrementally add capabilities uh, over time. With that, what I'd like to do is I'd like to turn um, the floor over to Eddie from Pentaho to, uh, to uh, talk, uh, a, little talk a little bit before we take, before any, we take any, any questions. questions. Great. Thanks, Ron. Um, just as you finished up there, actually, there was a relevant question about determining the value of the reference architecture and the accelerants to a, a network provider. So we've got an example of that right now ourselves as Pentaho, where we've got a, um, somebody in that category who is doing um, terabyte-sized um, snapshots of data from their environment and attempting to move that data into a Hadoop environment and then perform um, analytics and visualization on that to help them um, you know, reconfigure and make their network more performant. So the way they're measuring the success of the deployment is a combination of two things. One is time to that value and how quickly they're able to move data at that scale um, into a you know, processing database like uh, like like Hadoop uh, really quickly and then be able to do um, very advanced query analytics and visualization on that. So it's about time and the second thing you know comes back to one of the first questions you were asked there which is about about cost and I think the questioner asked about open source uh, seems to be driving a lot of the innovation and that is true and we're one of the companies at the forefront of that being an open source uh, company ourselves but uh, we are a blend, um, as Ron described it, uh, and that's what this chart is about. So I hope that answers the question um, and kind of goes back to the first question about our platform, which you can see here um, on the screen. And our, our technology and our platform is about providing uh, big data analytics, uh, and it's about adding the analytical capability to the system integration strategy that Ron really just very elegantly outlined. And help you to quickly extract that data uh, and business value from the data that you are generating from these devices. And they can be, I think one of my example slides is going to show mobile, a mobile device uh, company using uh, analytics for, uh, device, for device data analytics and the, the device is, uh, is mobile, for example. So it's not just server manufacturers or storage or network manufacturers that this all applies to. So it's about, as I said, the elegant extraction of value. And that all begins here on the left-hand side of the screen where we are, uh, have the ability to very elegantly, um, at scale, capture, ingest, and integrate all of the data coming from your devices into these new open source technologies such as Hadoop, such as NoSQL, and help you to be able to move that at a very reasonable cost um, in a highly performant manner so that you can get that data into a database where you can quickly begin to process that. And that is one of the key innovations coming from our open source uh, community and our internal development team. So that's really, really critical for you when you're trying to analyze and you're trying to get value from your device data. And the second characteristic of device data that Ron mentioned is about, it's often quite cryptic and non-descriptive in its nature and they're could be and will be a need to blend that data with information from other databases to give your device data context. And that's the second um, piece of the puzzle that we bring. You know, somebody uh, asked about accelerants, and I think that's the second accelerant that Pentaho can bring, which is get your device data references to make, it, to make sense of it and helping you blend that with something like, you know, what the device category, product names, could be from a services database to make sense of it. So you've got highly elegant ingestion from your databases into your databases, and then you've got the ability to give that data sense and to give it context by merging that and blending that with contextual data that you have internally in another repository. And lastly, the piece that's really key then is the visualization and analytics of that. You've got to be able to visualize, you've got to be able to analyze, you've got to be able to predict on what your device data is telling you in order to go 
all the way back to you know where Ron started, which is about how do you improve the product, the service? How does engineering do a better job with agile, agile development? What's your time to market? How do I analyze this better? And our platform has the ability to do both the elegant ingestion at, at scale, but then also advanced query, advanced analytics, with your data merged with data to give it context so that you can see it, measure it, understand it, you can predict it, and therefore extract business value from it. And that's really what the combination of what Pentaho is doing with Ron and his team there at Think Big is helping you with our blended approach of really, really smart consulting and engineering and a very uh, cost effective, highly performant analytical engine to get at the business value that's sitting in all that data that you've got. And that's essentially the story behind uh, the slide that you that you see in front of you. Next slide, Ron, please. Oh, there's a polling question. Sorry, Ben. Oh, no problem. Uh, thanks, Eddie. Uh, last polling question. How many people are involved in your big data buying decision? One to five, six to eight, nine to 11, or 12 plus? Give you about a minute to answer that. Just while, uh, while that's up, I guess I'd be remiss in, in not pointing out that we're, uh, we're hiring at Think Big and would love to, uh, to have people to join our team. If you're excited about being part of a, a nimble onshore leader in delivering big data solutions, we're, we'd love to, to hear from you and have you help us create more of these uh, path-breaking device analytics solutions. Okay, so 63%, about one to five. Uh, that's where the bulk of it is, and the next is over 6% uh, at six to eight people, and nine to 11, zero, and the rest of the bulk is at 12 plus. So great, thanks everyone. Go ahead, Eddie. Thanks. Um, so just um, in, in the floor, Ryan followed, there was a number of uh, case studies. Um, couple here to show um, where the data being used by major uh, Wall Street financial institutions. So this is an example of somebody who's not a hardware manufacturer or network manufacturer, but taking um, the device in this case is a large software platform coming from, uh, you know, which is used on trading floors. And the customer essentially was looking to uh, increase the level of frequency that they were doing advanced querying on their balances so that they could do a better job for their commercial customers. So the device was a software platform. And the use case was we needed to do advanced query. And in order to achieve that, there was a significant amount of data involved here. And initially, the, the bank had gone about solving that problem by you know, throwing bodies at it, which is you know, often what we see um, in people early stages struggling with particularly a Hadoop deployment which is using you know, um, programmers to write JavaScripts to move data and try to do that at scale. You can see you know, literally there was millions of records involved here. So that's both expensive, it's very time consuming, and it's error prone because you know, humans are prone to errors, we all know, and uh, that causes um, you know, coding errors, causes delays. So you can see on the left-hand side the Java map produced uh, results. And then uh, we got involved in the project and they used our, um, particularly on the integration side, which is one of our really strong suits, is this massive at scale, very elegant data integration and ingestion capability. And the EPL employee within the bank was able to use the tool because it is uh, visual, uh, visual based, not non-script non writing, non-programming based. And we really um, uh, took down the amount of time that was needed and the amount of cost that was needed. So if you look at why you would do uh, a, pro 